Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honour. Um, I really do. Uh, I really do. Look, I, I know it's 7.30 at night. Uh, if you're in Sydney or Melbourne, I can see some of my friends here from all over Australia. There's some people from WA and some uh, some others. Um, I I just thank you for the investment of um, of taking an evening and just you know allowing me to um, tell you some stories, uh, brag on Jesus a bit about um, you know what he's doing in the marketplace. Um, there is, uh, I got to say to you, if, if you're happy, Ziggy, for me to just jump in and say a couple of comments. Go for it. There is um, undeniably, there is an, a move of God currently in the earth. I know there's COVID in the earth, but concurrently, there's also a move of God in the earth. And this move of God began breaking. It's a revival. It began breaking in and upon uh, the earth several years ago. Um, many people as yet have not uh, become awakened to it. I'm talking about Christians. And the reason for it is because I believe this revival is manifesting greater in, at this point in a greater measure at the uh, door of businesses than it is at the altar of churches. Uh, that's not to diminish, by the way, that, of course, church, but God is moving in the marketplace in, in unseen realms in, in ways that are outstanding and um we 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 just you know we're orientated i'm a i've been a believer for 30 years and a lot of the time we we relegate or when we think of moves of god or we think of miracles isn't it funny when we think of miracles most people think respectfully of a church service yet 90 percent of the miracles in the new testament that jesus performed were in the marketplace right 90 percent. and then if you go further than that if you count the miracles between genesis and revelation you'll find that 90 percent were in the marketplace doesn't mean that god doesn't do miracles in the church right it's just that um the majority of our time listen the majority of 97 percent of christians time is unless you're unless you're employed uh to work in a church full time the majority of your time you're actually not in a church building as such so it would it would stand to reason that miracles and presence of God and breakthroughs of God, the majority of those we would actually see outside the church uh, in the sense of the traditional church setting of a Sunday. Church setting on a Sunday is so important. It, it, is, an, it is where we come, we rally, we get fueled, we come in the presence of God, we, we, we take communion together, God meets us in the midst of that, we, we come, we bring our offerings, we, we meet God in miracle moments of honour, of tithe, honour of worship, and then what do we do? Then 97% of us go and fulfil, listen to this, or outwork the 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 major expression of our ministry which for many of you it's either a business owner uh for others it's a school teacher for others it's a respectfully it's a stay-at-home mother do you know stay-at-home mums are in ministry they're raising future champions right <laughs> they're, they're, as a matter of fact stay-at-home mums are, are just as much in ministry as the fully employed youth pastor in a church they're, they're all in ministry no one's better than the other it's just a different sphere right it's just a different sphere of ministry so I'm really passionate. I think you can see that coming through um, about business, about kingdom, about what God's doing. I really believe we're in the midst of a massive shift. This isn't new. Listen to this. The, the move of God in the marketplace, it's not new. It's just new to our generation. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you understand church history, you'll know that from about AD 600 uh, until about AD 1100, uh, the marketplace move was how Europe changed from being paganized or pagan to Christianized. It actually happened through believers. Uh, Pat, St. Patrick was the spearhead in AD 600 uh, uh, of that move of God that ended up over 500 years Christianizing Europe. Then we go into the Dark Ages. You pick it up in 1500s with Luther's Reformation. By the time we get to 1570, Luther opens up the monasteries and he shifts them from just centers of Bible teaching to become centers for science, arts, business, medicine, fused with Bible together. And it starts a renaissance. It's where we actually get a lot of the seedbeds of the 16, 17, 1800s of the renaissance, right? Until about the 1800s where all of a sudden we separate the Bible colleges and we no longer 
begin to teach the sciences and the arts and business and government, and we purely make them Bible centers, right? We divorce it from the marketplace. And that's where we have most of those uh, Bible colleges, which are great, that produce church ministers. I'm talking about, you know, professional church ministers, but did not produce marketplace champions, which is what we really want to talk about tonight. So um, um, maybe just maybe tell you my testimony. I, I, um, I'm 48. I started my first business 38 years ago. I was 10 when I started my first business, it was a car wash business. I was a poor house kid from Southwest Sydney. Uh, dad was a gambler. So imagine I had a double whammy. We were poor living in the housing commission and dad's a bad gambler. I, I mean, if you're poor and dad's a good gambler, you're all right. But um, we're poor, dad's a bad gambler, so there's no cash in the house. So I get frustrated, I'm 10, there's no pocket money, right? Uh, what do I do? I pinch my mother's uh, laundry bucket, a couple of sponges, and her dishwashing liquid, and I and I convinced two of my mates, nine and eight years old, and we um we they come to my place Saturday morning eight o'clock. Listen to this for entrepreneur, right? Come to my place Saturday morning, and we make a deal. We say we're going to go to the rich people's places. The rich people's places, by the way, was just anybody that didn't live in the housing commission. We never knocked on a housing commission door because they were as broke as we were, right? Imagine eight o'clock in the morning, right? This bloke, he's drinking his coffee, he's in his dressing gown, he's reading the paper, he's thinking. Man, I got to wash the car. I got to do. All of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. He opens the door. There's three kids. A Ten-year-old. That's me, right? Nine-year-old. The nine-year-old's job is to hold the bucket. Never show what's in the bucket because we had washing detergent, right? Don't want to show the punter that we got washing detergent. And the other bloke, the eight-year-old, he's just there to be cute. He's, he's not saying anything. I'm the sales guy. I said, "Sir, your car looks dirty. The three of us will wash your car for a dollar. We got all our gear. We just need to use your hose." Man, it was the deal of a lifetime. The bloke goes, man, these kids have just won me an hour for a dollar. So we used to do that until we, uh, at that time in Australia, we were only allowed to work half day Saturdays, right? So we'd make about eight bucks, watch eight or nine cars. Oh, mate, I, I'm, a, I'm an old bloke. Eight dollars back then, we lived like kings. I tell you, we used to go to the, the fish and chip shop, man, order up all the fried food we could get, play Pac-Man all afternoon, drink, drink, fizzy drink, till we threw up. Like it just, and, and, <laughs> We were happy, like, you know, then we went back and did it again the next week. You know, we, man, I did that for ages. And um, that was my, that's how I cut my teeth in business. And uh, in the end, I, um, I, I really loved that. So I, my dad then ended up typical, uh, typical Italian, you know, wog sort of family. He ends up buying a pizza shop, right? Um, I become the waiter every afternoon. I'm 11 years old. I'm the waiter at my dad's pizza shop. Um, but my dad, you know, he's, he, he was sly. He, he wouldn't pay me. He, he, he said, uh, you can have a pizza a night. That, that was my pay. Well, you know, that works for about three months to get sick of pizza. You know, then I started asking him for cash. He wouldn't pay me. So you know what I did? I went two doors down to the Greeks that owned a cafe. And I said to him, if I work for you, will you pay me? And they said, yeah, we'll pay you $1.50 an hour. So I went to my dad and I said to him, I've just found a job that's going to pay me $1.50 an hour. If you match it, I'll tell him I can't work for him. He laughed. He thought I was joking. I quit my dad's business and went and worked for his competition two doors down because they paid me $1.50 an hour. I was 11. I worked for them for a year and a half till I, then I went to their comp the, the, the competition was a Lebanese family that was down the road. I went and saw that bloke after I'd worked for the Greeks and he said, how much the Greeks pay you? I said, $1.50 an hour. He goes, what would it take for you to come work for me? I said, you need to double my money. He said, if you quit today, I'll pay you three bucks an hour. I went to the Greeks, I quit. I went and worked for the Lebanese guy. Lo and behold, about six months into that, my old man comes to me. I'm 13 and a half. I'm year eight, year nine. He says to me, I want to buy the Greeks out, but I don't know how to run the cafe. I'll let you leave school if you become a business partner. I left school at 13 and a half years old to become my father's business partner, and that's how I started in business. So it, it, it's in me. Come to Christ when I'm 17, radical conversion, start reading the book of John because I'm dating this bird that's a Mormon, my mum. She, she's not telling me anything. And I, I said to her, you've got to tell me what, I don't know what she, she's beautiful, but I don't know what she believes. You know, my mum says, if you read the book of John, I'll, I'll have a chat with you. I'm reading the book of John. I tell you, my mother and my grandmother didn't sleep or eat for a month. They stormed heaven every night. As I'm reading the book of John, I'm crying. My heart gets open. Uh, I, I come to Christ reading the book of John at 17. So here we go. I'm, I'm in business since I'm 10. 
I'm radically born. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm radically born again. You know, I know some people get a little bit born again. I'm radically born again. I mean, literally dark and day and night. I'm radically born again. Fire for God, get cleaned up. You know how it is. A couple of years, people disciple you, love you, do all that stuff. Great stuff. I'm 20. I, I got this call of God in my life. I'm burning for the kingdom. I go to my pastor. He's a good man. He's a good man. I said to him, I've got this call of God in my life. What should I do? And he says, if you've got a call of God in your life, you need to go to Bible college because you need to become a pastor. I, I don't know what to do with that. I mean, I love the church. I, I love God. And I, I said to God, if you want me to be, I thought I'd make a really bad pastor and I because I, I thought, uh, you know, I like I like money more than people, you know, like back then, you know, back then. I guess I'm changed. I'm converted. Like, forgive me. But I like, <laughs> so so I come to Christ. I'm, I'm called to ministry. Uh, at that point, it's like, well, you, you're going to be a senior pastor, you know. So I, I go and do Bible college. It's, it's pretty good. I, I love the Bible, love, love and all that. Still not sure how to be a pastor. I'm kind of an average guy. I start working for the church. Here's the problem. Start working for this church. Start as I'm working for the church, I'm daydreaming about business. Daydreaming. I'm thinking, oh no, I'm in trouble. Like I'm in trouble. Like I've, I've given all like I sold all my businesses. I'm working in the church and now I'm daydreaming about business. So I, I quit. I said to the pastor, listen, I can't can't work for you anymore. I said, I'll I'll just be a businessman in, in the church and I'll be a wallet. I'll just be a wallet, you know. He says, All right, no problem. So I go and get what guess what? I start building businesses. Guess what I start daydreaming about? The church. God, I'm passionate about it. Now I'm conflicted. I'm thinking, God, am I supposed to be a businessman or a pastor? Actually, the prayer was this. Am I supposed to be in ministry or not? That was the prayer. Am I supposed to be in ministry or not? You know, God never answered that prayer. He let me, left me hanging for six years, would never answer that prayer until eventually one day God says, stop separating, stop separating things. Everything is ministry. You know, whatever I call you to, that's your ministry. If I call you to be a pastor in a church, that's your ministry. If I call you to be a businessman, that's your ministry. If I call you to be a doctor, that's your ministry. Everything is ministry. It's no such thing as sacred and secular. It's no such thing as this is my spiritual life and this is my secular life. Come on, the word secular means God void. It means where God is not. Do you know, there's a psalm. David says, where can I flee from your presence? If I'm, Because if I go to the highest heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the deepest corner of hell, even there you're with me. Even hell isn't secular, right? There's, you, you, there's no such thing as secular, God void. God's in everything. God's in, uh, God's in sport. God's in politicians. God's in the legal system. God's in business. God's in all of it, like all of it. Once I realized that, stop separating it. I just said to God, okay, I'm in ministry. No matter what happens, let, let's go. So I, you know, I start that and, and um, you know, uh, my wife, she's an entrepreneur as well. We build all these sort of businesses and, um, you know, that's kind of where I get to until I'm about 35 and, and I dabbled in corporate life and uh, I'm in ministry though, you know, I'm in ministry in corporate life and got the promotion of a lifetime at 35, uh, massive promotion. As I'm going home to celebrate with my wife, I feel like the Lord said to me, this isn't for you. And I said to God, what do you mean it's not for me? This is it. This is the this is the international corporate pathway. You know, this is I got picked out of 200,000 employees in this multinational with a with a boss that hated my guts because I was a Christian. Right. He gave me the biggest promotion of my entire life. I said, God, this is your favor. Uh, this is this is this is you. He, he, God said, it's not it's not me. This is this is a moment. This is a moment for you. I just feel like the Lord watched, said, I asked the Lord, what should I do? He said, I want you to quit. <laughs> I want you to quit and I want you to be a prophetic business coach. Listen, this, this is 13 years ago. This is before uh, this even became prophetic business coach. I'm like, what are you talking about, prophetic business coach? So here's what I do. I go and I quit <laughs> and I start to set up as a prophetic business coach and then God throws a spanner in the words. And he says, you're going to be a prophetic business coach, but you're not allowed to coach Christians for three years. I'm a prophetic business coach and I'm not allowed to coach Christians. I said to God, who will I prophesy to? And he said, you'll prophesy to the unsaved in business. <laughs> Have you ever tried to prophesy in a boardroom? You, you, you ever tried to pull out a Bible in a boardroom? Like, 
Bible, they're going, put that aside. We're talking about how to make another 100 million, right? How do you prophesy in the boardroom? You prophesy in the boardroom by bringing the kingdom of God with no religious language. So you prophesy in the boardroom. I found, I tell you what, biggest, the biggest eye open for me, I found that those that are unsaved love prophecy. They love the principles of the kingdom. They just don't like our religious baggage. That's all. I had to learn how to prophesy without saying, Jesus says. I used to start saying things like this. You know why you're talking to a CEO? I'd say, you know why you're talking? I get this image and I'd, go, and I'd start prophesying. I get this image of the company and there's this area and their eyes would open up. They'd go, how do you know that stuff? What do you, I never told you that. That's exactly what's going on. How do you see that? They started calling me a futurist. They said, you must be a futurist because that's, you know, that's, they couldn't say prophet. They don't know how to say prophet. I said, you must be a futurist. I tell you what, the doors that got open there, I got a funny story uh, of, of, a, of a time in the boardroom. Um, let me share this with you. Uh, it was actually with the NRL, right? NRL for you Victorians, by the way. NRL is rugby league. It's like AFL, but 10 times better. And uh, so <laughs> I'm at, the, I'm at, the, I'm at the, the players headquarters for the NRL and we're trying to, I'm there with one of the first grade footballers who's a kingdom guy and we're trying to pitch to the NRL a decide, listen to this, a, an ethical mentoring program for their elite athletes, right? And what I've done is I've built it on all kingdom principles, but I've stripped the scriptures out because it can't be a religious program, right? So, but everything's kingdom in it. So we're in this boardroom and there's all these, you know, heavy hitters and they're kind of pushing back on us and, you know, because we're talking about ethics and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And um, one of the ladies, one of the key ladies, she's not a believer, she says, you know, Dave, she says, can I just interrupt you? I'm doing the big presentation. She says, can I interrupt you for a moment? I said, sure. She says, you know, while you're talking, she says, I get this picture of you sitting on a park bench. And she said, and I see these players coming and they are kind of slouched over and they come and they sit next to you. And she said, I see you talking to them. And as you talk to them, she says, listen to this. She goes, they start to, in this thing that I'm seeing, she goes, they start to get bigger like they start to grow. And she says, all of a sudden, after a couple of minutes, they stand up with their shoulders back and their chest out and they walk away. She says, I think that this is kind of like a picture of what might happen if we embrace your program. She was not a believer, but I tell you, nine times out of 10, that, that um, nine times out of 10, if you would have heard that in church, everyone would say, she just prophesied. I reckon she just prophesied. I reckon the spirit of prophecy fell on her and she actually prophesied what our program could be to the NRL. I mean, uh, I mean I've got a million stories to, to tell you about this sort of stuff because I feel like tonight, one of the things I was thinking about today, I was like, I feel like if I can just ground what I'm talking about with, with, with real life, real marketplace stories that happened today, not 100 years ago, not 200 years ago, that for some of you, it's going to be like you're going to have handles and you're going to have these aha moments and go, oh, that's me. I can do that. that that's my world. You're talking about my world because this is the world of the business people, right? So um, I'm, I can talk all night. So Ziggy, I'm, I'm, I'm at your mercy. So if you want me to keep talking, I'll keep talking. If you want to ask me a question, um, you know. By the way, I, I think maybe I don't want to take over, but if if you've got a question, maybe you can throw it in the comment section and someone can help me, um, you, you know, and if there's a question that's relevant or something, you know, we can. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Harrow, do you want to just keep an eye out in the chat section? If anyone's got a comment, we'll, uh, you know, we can take it. Oh, David, mate, mm. off, off you go. I think this is where I saw you last time. You're at your best. Off you go, brother. Okay. <laughs> sure. I, I mean, um, let me just probably bring it back, uh, bring it up to today. So, you know, I do wear, I do, I do run in two, uh, two streams, all ministry, the other side of my world. So I, I, I run a, a prophetic consultancy company. Um, uh, I coach, I coach kingdom business people all over the world, uh, USA, Europe. It's a bit easier with Zoom, by the way, um, uh, all over Australia and into New Zealand. Um, but, but I also, like I said, I'm part of a wonderful church up here called Hope Unlimited Church, uh, Pastor Mark and Darlene. I am the marketplace pastor. So what that what does that mean? Just like you would have in most churches, you would have a youth pastor and a kids church pastor. Well, 
uh, we recognise because we re you know we recognise um, you know the the unique nuances of king people in business in ministry believers um, by the grace of God uh, we're able to allocate me as um, uh, to take care of we have about throughout our six campuses maybe about a couple of hundred business people represented and uh, you know of course uh, I'm I, I help to steward them uh for you know with um pastors mark and darlene and so a um, couple of things that i do here we um we started it we didn't start an in-house bible college we started uh two uh, six years ago uh pastor mark came to me and we um we pioneered a an, an kingdom entrepreneur academy right where what we did is we took uh we invited people that had a business idea or were in business to come and and basically do a almost like a one-year in the evening, one evening a week uh, course uh, where we would upskill them in business excellence, real world business excellence stuff and kingdom worldview and make sure that those two things were married strongly together. We saw uh, in the first two years, we had about uh, 20 people sign up the first year, 20 people sign up the second year. We saw 26 businesses launched. Two of those businesses became global enterprises. Um, and, and, you know, just, just wonderful. Uh, we kind of um, got, a, got a, you know, our admission is we kind of lost our way. We, the church exploded doing really well and we took our eye off the ball a little bit and um, we appointed a guy there and he ended up trying to turn it into a respectfully like an academic Bible college. It was like, man, we got the best Bible college in the world in Alpha Crucis. Why, why are we going to go and build another mini Alpha Crucis, right? So um, anyway, that died a died a horrible death really quickly in the third year. Um, so we we repented in sackcloth and ashes. And then a couple of years ago, we had, um, I don't know if many of you might know this now, we had a prophet come called Fergus McIntyre. Uh, he's an a old C3 prophet. And uh, he come he come and um, uh, Pastor Mark and I have been talking in the shadows about resurrecting this this Entrepreneurs Academy, you know. And um, uh, Fergus doesn't, doesn't know us from a bar of soap picks us out of the crowd and says, um, prophesize, basically, you guys got to build this thing. It's, a, it's going to be supernatural business, yada, yada, yada. So we launched it last year. It's called Center of Excellence. And uh, a couple of our students are on uh, on the call here. Great, great thing. Every Monday night for 25 weeks, um, uh, just mentored them in business excellence, personal development, and supernatural kingdom worldview. They were the three streams. And um, we had a great time last year, saw some of the businesses go into record profits, record expression in a COVID year. And uh, so we did it again this year, um, uh, 25 weeks, we did that, except we added a second course. The second course is called uh, Workplace Leaders. And that's where we mentor people that work for, for companies and all the rest. And we mentor them on how to be leaders in the workplace, emotional intelligence, uh, leadership principles, personal development, or all that sort of stuff. So um, we did that this year. Next year, we're going to do kingdom business, workplace leaders, and we're going to do a third one, which is a creative stream. And that's, uh, we're going to coach people that are like artists and poets and photographers and people that are in movies, are going to teach them success, like how to actually be successful, how to, how to commoditize what they're doing, kingdom worldview, how to be kingdom ambassadors in that. So, um, that's what I do from a home, like in the church perspective. Uh, I do that. I do that here as well as um, I, I have this mantra that says, "No one, no business uh, is allowed to fail under my watch." In our business community, so um, uh, we just uh, my my daughter, uh, my my youngest daughter, or my sorry, my oldest daughter just launched a beauty salon last year, and um, when she launched that salon, man, I mean, she was booked out for the first couple of months. All all church people. Like we just don't let you know, don't don't let anybody go under. You just have a thing. We um, when you open a business, we'll, we we come, we bring the prophetic team, we bring the intercessors, uh, take communion, uh, bless the business, prophesy into the business. One of the businesses we did that to four years ago, standing start. Uh, four years ago, we prophesied into this lady's office over the chairs, prophesied into her staff that weren't even there in the spirit, and. Um, she went from standing start to uh, major enterprise, um, sold it for 
millions, 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 you know, and, wow. and just, but just, just loving Jesus, doing great things. So that's kind of the, that's the context of, of my world presently, um, you know, and how we're trying to outwork how to, how, you know, in the kingdom community, in the church community, uh, business people should be the most encouraged the most undergirded. I mean, everyone should be. I'm just saying, you know, like equally, everyone should be. As much as the kids, as much as the youth, as much as the young adults, as much as the parents, as much as the families. That, that's that's all I'm saying here. Not not awesome. elevating. All should be encouraged. Awesome. David, um, one of the things uh, I saw you post on Facebook a couple of days ago, you, you, yeah. you put a quote, and this is where I was referring to Pastor Shane's reference in Haggai about glory to glory. Oh, uh, yeah. And you, you yeah. posted, you said, I believe that the blessings and favour of God in front of us will yeah. eclipse any of the challenges that we have faced yeah. in this last season. Can you expand on that? Yeah, so um, it's great. It's a great comment. So one of the things that we teach, I teach in the, um, in the Kingdom Business course, I teach about the three realms of business, right? So let me just give you those. The three realms of business is natural realm, universal realm, and supernatural realm right? Natural realm is hustle and grind. That is, that is, that is what the Babylonians, that's what the unsaved, that they're, they're limited. Most of them are, limit themselves to natural realm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, many well-meaning Christians that separate their spirituality, uh, spiritual on Sunday and play with the Babylonians on Monday or play at the same level as the Babylonians on Monday. I was in Europe and a very significant businessman in the city came to me, came to one of our seminars. We do these kingdom business seminars and they just, he was in Budapest. He said, listen, we came out of, we came out of communism 20 years ago. And he said, most of us were, you know, just sacred secular. He said, we used to, we used to come to church to repent on Sunday for everything we did Monday to Friday, because we live in a corrupt, uh, you know, corrupt business culture. And so we had to do shady deals. And we didn't know that there was another option because how do you, you know, how do you beat the brown paper bag sort of thing? You know, he says, but for the first time, someone's told us that actually we don't have to compete at the same level. So uh, natural realm is the realm of the Babylonians. It's hustle and grind. Uh, uh, the natural realm is you, you need to you need to be competent in it, but not contained by it as a kingdom business person. So you can't deny it's not like, listen, if you stay at home every day and pray um, and you're a business person, you'll probably go broke because <laughs> no one's opening the shop, right? The angels aren't going to open the shop for you, right? So, so, so hear me here, hear me here. You've got to be competent in the natural realm. Universal realm is the realm of sowing and reaping. This realm is the realm of universal laws. These laws work whether you're a heathen or a son of God. Right? Uh, do you know that some of the most uh, that some of the some of the most significant business people in the world practice tithing? Do you know that they they actually practice the principle of tithing? Now they think they say, look, I'm I'm giving ten percent to the universe or whatever. But but the, what they're doing is they're accessing. Listen to this. They're accessing an etern uh, and it like like a, a a a creation truth, right? That works simply out of obedience called universal realm. Uh, now, here's the thing. A lot of believers contain themselves to natural and universal realm. So they, they, they know what to do naturally. And then they, you know, they, they know they should do good things. And so they do that. The thing about it is this. For the believer, we have the ultimate marketplace advantage. Do you know what the ultimate marketplace advantage is? Supernatural realm, right? Why is it, David, that you can say so boldly, that what's in front of us is going to eclipse anything that's behind us. Because for kingdom business people, we're not contained to natural or just universal realm thinking, right? Pastor Shane uh, quoted from uh, Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. Let me just quote you from a, one verse before it. This is, this is supernatural realm. This is God shouting to the earth. He says, the silver is mine. <laughs> the gold is mine, declares the, Lord's, the Lord of hosts. And then he starts talking about the latter house. He starts talking about the kingdom. What's God saying? Listen, God's saying it, the, the silver and the gold, the, the economics of the earth, I mean, come on, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That has a consequence. And as ambassadors of the kingdom, 
listen to this, you are brought into this dimension called the commonwealth of the kingdom, right? Your bank balance, your business's bank balance is not your limitation. You are brought into the commonwealth of the kingdom. When Jesus says, no one has left mother, father, house, land, or whatever that won't inherit, right? More than that, in the, not only in the age to come, but now. And you go, oh, hang on a second. What are you saying? Every person that comes into the kingdom as a son or daughter of God, immediately their, their, their financial standing changes. They might be stewarding a certain amount in their bank account, but they have come into the commonwealth of the kingdom. And so long as they come into, which we'll talk about in a minute, assignment, the, the limitation on your assignment or the access to the provision of your assignment respectfully is not your bank account. It's not the turnover of your business, right? It's not the turnover of your business. The, the, you get to access the vault of heaven that carries kingdom wealth. I mean... Once you operate in supernatural realm, okay, so let me just, so supernatural realm, let me explain that for a moment. moment. There are five principles that you must, add that, that if you're going to operate consistently in supernatural realm, five principles, let me give them to you quickly. I mean, I think we're recording this, so if you need it, you know, you can come back to it. I'll just speed through. Here's the five principles. Five principles to operate in supernatural realm for every kingdom entrepreneur. You must understand your consecration. You are set apart. You, you, you Listen, let me let me give you. God's not uh, God's not your business partner. He's, God's not a genie in a bottle that you pray to and rub. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, He's not your sugar daddy. He's not your business partner. He's not in. God's not interested in a 50-50 deal with you, right? If you're on assignment, your business is God's, not yours. You are a steward, not an owner. You don't in the kingdom. You don't own anything. You steward what the Father gives you. Your business is your stewardship. Come on, this is, uh, you, you want an analogy of this? Genesis 2. What's the first thing that God does after he gives Adam dominion, capacity? He gives him a, he gives him a business. He gives him a horticultural business called the garden. He gives him capacity to steward the garden, to steward the animals. Like this is Genesis 2. I don't know, we don't have to, you know, this is like, this is the start of your Bible. Isn't it funny that God says, um, I'll, I'll go off on a small tangent and I'll give you the other four realms, by the way, other four principles. Um, isn't it funny when God makes creation, he makes it good, not perfect. Do you know, he makes it good. The word good is shalom. It means full of potential. God created a universe that was full of potential, not perfect. And then what he does is he gives man dominion. Do you know what one of the base words for dominion means? to take something and bring it to the fullness of its potential. Like it's a setup from the start, right? We're all in the kingdom enterprise. Everybody's in the kingdom enterprise. You get born again into a family business. People say the church isn't a business. Uh, um, listen, the church is part of a major enterprise called the kingdom. It's a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of, you know, all of that. I get that. Um, money is part of it. It's not the ultimate. The ultimate of people. People matter more than money. But I tell you what, if you get the money, you can help people, right? So, okay, first principle of supernatural realm is consecration. Second principle is you must be dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit. This isn't about your smarts. No matter how smart you are, listen, God is the mega brain of the universe. Every business problem you have, every issue that's in your marketplace, you have access to the mega brain of the universe. You have access to the wisdom of the eternal. It's what Daniel tapped into in, in Babylon. It's what Joseph tapped into in Egypt. It's what Esther tapped into in, in Persia. Like, like, you understand, you, uh, Daniel solved problems, economic problems. Joseph solved an economic problem. This is marketplace stuff. Second principle of operating in supernatural realm is you must depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. One of the most powerful things you can do, listen, business person, Speaking the Holy Ghost. Like, I, I know that sounds counterintuitive. I got to tell you, sometimes I've had business like, like conundrums, like issues, and it's like, oh man, I can't get an answer. I, I've learned how to pray in, the, pray in the Spirit and believe God for the interpretation. 
I have prophesied the answer to riddles in my business from pain in the spirit. <laughs> Power of the spirit. H how can that change something? Let me give you a practical example. I wonder if he's... Um, um, so I got a guy, I got a guy uh, from Europe that I, that I coach in my practice, uh, very significant guy. He's got this agricultural company, right? Second largest company, agricultural business in his nation. Kingdom guy, loves the Lord. In the late 90s, He's, he's, he's leaning into the Holy Ghost. I mean, this guy built a prayer room in his house. He felt the Lord told him, to, he's a CEO of a company, the Lord told him to build a prayer room in his house because he said, when I call you, I want you to, like in the middle of the night, I want you to go to that prayer room because I'm going to give you answers to your business, right? So he built this prayer room, this wing in his house, it's a prayer room. Every time the Lord whispers into his, into his says it's often at like two in the morning, he'll go in that prayer room so he doesn't wake up the missus and just start storming heaven until he gets an answer. He said in the late 90s, the Lord spoke to him and said to him, I want you to take this money from the business and I want you to buy gold, like stock market gold. So he does. He, 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 he takes this money, goes and he buys a water gold at a very low price. Within a short period of time, like six to 12 months, gold skyrockets, right? Just skyrockets. And the Lord speaks to him and tells him exactly when to sell it. He makes like he makes a mozza, like we're talking serious money, right? He makes a mozza, and this is what Holy Spirit says to him: "This money, this profit, it's not yours. I want you to put it aside. I've got a plan for it, and you're not to touch it." He said he had the fear of God on him. You're not to touch it. It's for a kingdom assignment that I'm going to show you. He said that he sat on that money for years. Listen, for several years, and then he meets this young guy. He meets this young guy. And when, when he meets this young guy, the Lord says to him, that money that you made in the gold, it's for this young guy and his ministry. This young guy, what he was doing was going around that nation and, and rescuing guys out of addiction off the street, you know, guys and girls. And he had this dream that he wanted to build these kind of rehab centers. He wanted to call them life centers. And the Lord says, this young man, you're going to pay for his life centers with that money. So here's, here's where it gets even more crazy. So at the moment he says, yes, Lord, they get a meeting with a politician in that nation, right? It's Eastern Europe, right? They get a meeting with a politician in that nation. And in that meeting, the politician, is, they're asking about these things. And the politician says, we have some government land that we might be able to sell you. There's a problem. The problem is that no one wants to buy the land. And the reason no one wants to buy the land is because there's still concentration, abandoned concentration camps from World War II on the land. And everybody believes the land's cursed because it's where the Nazis were killing the Jews. The government sell my business uh, guy the land. They buy the land and they convert the concentration camps, prisoner of war camps, the concentration camps, they convert them to life centres and they start redeeming kids and people off the street because he's listening to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, this, this guy's a business guy an agriculture company you know he's pushing cows around you know like crazy stuff third uh third uh, so second principle power of the spirit third principle operate in, in supernatural realm you must understand how to tap supernatural prosperity right supernatural prosperity i'm not just talking about you know put a dollar get a dollar i'm talking about multiplication that's where this whole deal about commonwealth of the kingdom comes in this is where this whole deal about understanding that tithing is an honor thing that connects you to a supernatural realm it goes beyond this isn't you know this isn't lottery this this is like supernatural realm my tithe is warfare it declares to the spirit world that i'm not limited to natural dimensions i'm not limited to natural dimensions my finances are not anchored in just natural economies <laughs> Kingdom, there's no such thing as a recession in the kingdom, right? Supernatural prosperity. Number four, if you're going to operate in supernatural realm, you must understand that you're an ambassador of Christ. You have a kingly and priesthood ministry in the marketplace. You, you, you're not representing yourself. <laughs> you, you don't. That's why, that's why we're excellent. That's why we that's why we we don't just we don't just do business, we don't just serve customers with just enough. We do 110%. That's why we, like Dave was saying, we, we, we minister to customers. We don't just sell them stuff. We improve their lives. Like we add value. Every interaction, we're adding value. 
How can I love this customer? How can I love this supplier? How can I love these um, employees of mine, right? Absolutely, you become preeminent in your sphere. Uh, I mean, I, I just think a lot of the time what we're doing is we're, I think sometimes God's not answering our prayers because it's, it's too small and it won't honour him. God, it's not like, God, just get me out of this rut. You know, like, come on, you're a kingdom ambassador. Like, we all go through dark nights of the soul, contradictory seasons. We all go through that. Kingdom ambassador. I, I don't just want to be a, an executive coach. I want to be world class, I, you know, top end. This isn't a bragging thing. This is just I'm representing the king, right? I'm representing the king. Fifth one. This is the last one. There's more, but I'll just give you five. The fifth one is this. If you're going to operate in supernatural realm, you've got to think legacy. You, 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 can't, you can't just think me and mine. You've got to think legacy. You've got to think much bigger than just you. You've got to think about what am I building? What am I leaving? What am I leaving in the earth? What's bigger than me? That's why, you know, kingdom business people, I mean, I tell you, if you're a kingdom business person, I, you should be just as passionate about the expansion of your, of your church as your pastor is. Like, absolutely. I mean, like, absolutely. I got one guy. I think he might be online here at the moment. This guy's so anointed. I mean, so anointed in business. Man, he's got passion to build the 21st century cathedrals for the kingdom. I mean, and, and, and here's the thing. He's not playing in the shallow end of the pool. This guy ain't a six-figure guy. He's not a seven-figure guy. It's not an eight-figure guy. Like, at a zero, you know, it's like significant guy. We're talking, you know, we're not talking about a guy that makes a thousand dollars profit and you know wants to build cathedrals. You know, those significant stuff. You've got to build for legacy. That's how you operate consistently in supernatural realm. If you do that, supernatural realm is favor of God. Uh -uh. I tell you what, I work hard, but I don't sweat. The Achilles' heel of a kingdom entrepreneur is striving. That's <laughs> striving, man. <laughs> anyway, Ziggy, come on, let's uh, like interject here a little bit. Let me take a sip of the tea. Oh, mate, love it. Love it. Do not strive. Not striving. Yeah, the Achilles heel. There's been a lot of good terms, um, you know, that use the commonwealth of the kingdom. I just yeah. love that, that, you know, that we're steward what we're given, but then you become part of the commonwealth. It's almost, it's almost feels like, you know, God save the queen type thing, but, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But that we're all in this, and we all have access to each, almost to each other's favor, right? So we can put we, each we other's, do. yeah, each yes. other's favor together and say, okay, let's pour it onto someone. Come so on. that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. One of the things I um, and it's already eight thirty. Feels like gee, we've only been going you know ten minutes. But one of the things um, I thought would be good to cover, and and yep. and yep. and you know, as you said, you've only got you've you've got five, but there's more. Goodness me, you know, we've got to have part three. If that's the case, <laughs> but um, you know, we spoke about um, or you mentioned the three business assignments, the so three types oh, yeah. of businesses, if you like. You want to just unpack that because I love that. Sure, sure. Look, listen. What, what I mean, what you're hearing tonight is um, is a long journey for me. This is remember, I started business when I was ten, get saved at seventeen, and then I'm trying to work out. I mean, respectfully, some of my, you know, some of my experiences was almost like God didn't like money and he didn't like business people, you know, and we were just basically trying to survive Monday to Friday so we could get to Sunday and, you know, just kind of help each other a little bit and then go out in the big bad world again, right? Uh, so many of the stuff, much of the stuff that I'm saying to you, I mean, I'm just giving you the tips of the icebergs, right? Like, you know, the college, it's 75 curriculum, 75 sessions videos, PDFs. So I'm just giving you the headlines. And because you know what, say, Holy Ghost is just going to, I'm going to just say a million things tonight. And the stuff that you need, Holy Ghost is going to bring to your remembrance. You're never going to forget, you know, this stuff. So one of the things that I observed after 13 years of coaching many kingdom business people was that I noticed that there were three distinct assignments that that kingdom business people had in the marketplace, that when they understood it, they actually began to come into alignment, right, with their assignment. Why is this important? Because God always puts his favor on his assignment, right? God doesn't put his favor on people. God puts his favor on his assignment and he invites people to partner with him in the assignment, right? When you stay to your assignment, 
you stay in the favour. It's just you don't have to struggle for it. You don't have to, you know, whip yourself. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You, I'm on assignment, right? On assignment. So, so there's there's three main uh, distinctions of assignments that I find kingdom business people all over the world have. So here's the three. First assignment is resource generation. Got to make money. If you're not making money, you're broke. You're not in business. You know. So resource generation. But when I talk about resource generation and assignment, I actually believe that God raises people up with a ministry of actually being treasurers of kingdom wealth. Like like serious, serious, right? Like there are there are people that have been brought into kingdom as kingdom businesses. When I say kingdom businesses, I'm talking about businesses. Their kingdom people that those businesses are actually tools, harvesting tools for wealth to come into the commonwealth of the kingdom, right? So you got to just you got to understand that that I mean, you know, we talk about it, it's in Isaiah, right, where it talks about um, that that there is um, th- that there's money hidden in the wealth in the vaults of darkness, and it says that God makes the wealth of the wicked make its way into the hands of the just. Do you know the context of that? I think it's something like Isaiah 45. Uh, so, so, so Isaiah writes about these hidden, these hidden treasures in these hidden treasures in vaults of darkness, and it says, "From the day of the command," he says. Then it says that the wealth of the wicked will make its way in the hands of the just. From the wealth of the from the day of the command to restore, he says, "I'll unlock these vaults." So what happens is this, uh, historians believe that um, when Cyrus, because because Isaiah says that Cyrus calls Cyrus by name, when Cyrus is in in power, they say that Daniel brings Cyrus the the scroll of Isaiah and reads to Cyrus because, you know, Isaiah wrote it 200 years or whatever before uh, Cyrus is even born. He shows King Cyrus where his name is written in prophetic literature about the command to restore, which is what historians believe provokes Cyrus to release the uh, children of Israel to return from captivity, right? Now, here's the interesting thing. When Nebuchadnezzar was in power, he took massive wealth of of, of the Babylon's gold and he buried it, right? Listen to this. He buried much of the gold under the Sea of Tiberias, right? Because he 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 wanted to he wanted to hide it from if anybody came and sacked Babylon he wanted it was like his reserve fund right it's like Saddam Hussein with his billions in the you know in the in the sheds you know at the back of Iraq so so the the day that Cyrus says to the children of Israel you can return one of his platoons is by the Sea of Tiberias and they discover the wealth of Nebuchadnezzar this gold this hidden gold that's there and unearth it into Cyrus's hand. Like it's a massive, um, unbelievable uh, uh, dynamic. I believe God is raising up kingdom treasurers. They're, listen to this, they're anointed to make money. But here's the the more exciting thing. They're anointed to give money. I got a guy, listen, I got a guy in my world and when the Lord drops a number, I mean, this guy's a significant guy. When the Lord drops a number into into his heart, he walks with the fear of God. Like he, he, he asked me once, he said to me, Dave, does everybody, does it work like this for everybody? Like, does it, you know, when God drops a number, he goes, I know that if I don't give it, this guy's pretty intense guy. He goes, I, I might drop dead. He goes, cause it's my assignment. My assignment is a treasurer, right? But, but I'll tell you what, this guy, this guy, he, he calls me. I said, Hey, where are you? He goes, I'm in Canada. I'm at the airport. I'm about to jump on an airplane. They're telling me to get on. He says, but I, I, I got to call you. I said, what's going on? He goes, I, I got to tell you that I'm, I'm going to deposit $30,000 into the church account. I said, okay, mate, no, no problem. You know, like, he said, no, no, I, I got to tell you before I get on this plane. I said, oh, why is that? He goes, oh, you need to hold me accountable. He goes, I feel like if I get on this plane, because he goes, God's been telling me for a couple of months, I got to drop 30 grand. And he says, and I haven't called you. And he goes, I, I feel like I'm in disobedience. He goes, I just don't want the plane to fall out of the sky on the way back to Australia. Well, here's the interesting thing. I said, mate, no worries. I got you locked down, thirty grand. I'm, I'm, I'm after you. You know, if you don't pay it, like, I'm just joking. Here's the, here's his testimony. By the time he lands, right, the first thing he does is he makes the transaction. Then he calls me. He goes, listen, I just made the transaction, and then I just check my emails. He goes, I've got an unexpected contract that's just come in. I didn't pitch for it. 
He goes, for 360 grand. He goes, mate, I can't give it away fast enough. You got any other project? You know, like some people are just anointed for this stuff, right? Not everyone's going to be at that realm, but we all, as kingdom business people, we have a dimension of that. The second assignment's on kingdom business people. It's called kingdom influence. Some people aren't going to be able to generate that sort of wealth, but they have influence that is beyond the size of their enterprises. It's even beyond their own skill set. I got a guy here, and he's an older guy. He's got a landscaping company. Great guy. He's a mate of mine. Mate, he's the he's the face of us Hasvana, right? Hasvana mowers, right? Like you know the Hasvana stuff. The guy, I mean, the guy's got a face like an old boot. You know, he's he's rough as guts. I'm I said like how can how can they make you the face of a you know you got the face of an old boot? I said to him. He goes, mate, I don't know, but they 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 give me all this favor. They they they're asking me like for strategy for their Australian operation. Like he's punching way above his weight. He's got kingdom influence. Like he's just got anointing to be influenced. I can tell you 10, 20 stories like that. People, he, 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 doesn't, he, he doesn't have anywhere near the turnover of money that some of my other guys have. So kingdom influence. The third assignment is called kingdom impact. I've got a guy in the city here, business, his organisation turns over 800 grand, maybe, maybe 800 grand, right? Not, nothing compared to some of the other kingdom business guys. But here's the interesting thing. This guy has an organization called MAD, M-M-A-D, Musicians Making a Difference, right? Not a Christian organization. He's a Christian. He's a kingdom guy. He's with a young guy, great guy. What he does through his organization is they rescue street kids and uh, kids in gangs off the street by bringing them into rap music programs that are sponsored by Sony Music and some of the big record labels. This guy, listen to this, this guy, he's literally saving these young kids' lives. And now several of those street kids have gone on to win Australian Idol, Australia's Got Talent. These are his, his kids, right? Have gone on to get uh, like global music deals. This guy, mate, he's never going to make the, the millions. He's not, never going to bankroll the kingdom, right? And he himself, he's, he's, he's not trying to be, you know, large and in charge. He's just, he's a humble guy, loves... Loves kids, loves what he's doing. Mate, his impact is literally, I'm telling you, today this guy is rescuing kids off the street of Sydney, off the street of the Central Coast. This guy's turning their lives around. They they bring them into these, they make they bring them into this rap music program. It's called Become a Superstar, right? It's a one-year program. While they're teaching them rap music, you know what else they teach them? How to do a budget, how to how, how to dress, how to how to talk right, how to how to be respectful, how to think great, you know. Literally, they're literally discipling these street kids through music programs that are underwritten by some of the biggest music labels in Australia. Unbelievable. Those three assignments. So here's what happens. One of those three assignments, you have all the, if you're in business, all those three assignments are on your life. One of them is the dominant assignment. When you, when you focus on the one that is dominant, the other two will flourish. Do you hear what I just said there? When you focus on the one that's dominant, the other two will flourish. Be careful to not always say, oh, I'm definitely anointed for the money, right? If you're not and you chase that, not only will you not get the money, you won't generate the resource, you also won't bring the influence and you won't have the impact. Just, you know, good. That's, that's, that's what you just got to work out. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's, that's what awesome. you were talking about, Ziggy, right? That's yeah, the, it was. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Am I am I anointed by the money, David? Hey, am I anointed you, you are, by mate. the money? Well, you're, yeah, I mean, you, 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 you also the looks. So uh, you know, you're not sure if you're punching above your weight, though. Oh, thank you, mate. It's the Greek background. I'm speaking about Greeks and Italians, and you certainly oh. played them all off each other early on with the limos and everything. I had all of them. I had all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, matey, it's eight forty-three, but there's just one thing before we just go to um, a few a few questions. But I just right. wanted to, you would have noticed this as well in the last within the last ten years has been in the in the marketplace amongst entrepreneurs, the 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 term put it out to the universe, yep. right? And so it's like put it out to the universe, and the universe will return it. And what I've noticed is that there's been certainly been this. Um, open sort of heart towards something that's greater out there, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, I, and I've certainly 
um, even used it in in discussions with with other business people where i've said well look you know absolutely you know throw it out to the universe that if you call the universe you call it whatever i call it god it's my faith in christ whatever you want to call throw it out there you know and that's 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 a an, an introduction but um if you just how do you how do you find in there in terms of you know you're dealing mm. non-christians in business yep. you know one yep. of the questions that's in there is sort of you know how does prophesying without mentioning God glorify God. And I think that's a that's a genuine that's question, good, right? It's, it's not good. a yeah, it's yeah, good one. Yeah. It's a good one. It's good. So how do you just give us a few examples, some insights yeah. into you know, dealing yeah. with non non Christian yeah. business people? Well, let me let, let me give you a Bible example because that way you know. So Paul Paul's in Athens, right? He's waiting for his buddies. He's walking around. He's bored, full of idols. You know, he's in Athens, right? He's rocking around, and he's 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 frustrated because he's thinking all oh, these dumb idols. You know. Finally, one of them catches his eye. It's the idol to the unknown God. And then he gets into this conversation with a bunch of these Greek philosophers, right? This is your, your buddies, Ziggy. Uh, <laughs> a bunch of Greek philosophers. And they're like, oh, man, this guy's interesting. Why don't you come up to the, uh, you know, this philosopher's center and tell us what you know, you know? So all of a sudden, Paul's like, oh, man, I've got an opportunity, right? So he goes up there. So what's he do? He pulls out his little booklet and he starts talking about the four spiritual laws, right? And he starts saying, you know, well, you've got to believe it. You know, No, he doesn't. He doesn't do any of that. Why doesn't he do it? Because the rules of engagement are different in the marketplace than they are in the church. Yeah, come on. Right? Like all of a sudden people go, oh, you know, everything's got to, you've got to have Jesus every second word. It's a bit like, you know, people that pray and they always say, Father God, every second word. Come on, it gets in the way, right? It gets in the way. Now, I'm not saying Jesus gets in the way. I'm just saying to you, the rules of engagement in the marketplace, Jesus gave us this technology. He said, I want you to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Do you know what it means to be as wise as a serpent and harmless as doves? You can interpret that. I want you to be as clever as the devil and as innocent as the Holy Spirit, right? Why? Because you're sheep in the midst of wolves. Right. And if you're going to be sheep in them, why, why, why aren't we wolves in the midst of wolves? Why didn't God make us wolves in the midst of wolves? Because if he did that, we wouldn't lean on him. Mm, if you're a sheep in the midst of wolves, I've got to tell you, you're going to lean on the shepherd. You're going to want to operate in spirit of prophecy. You, cause why? Because you're in the midst of wolves. you got nothing except God. The rules of engagement are absolutely different in the marketplace. So back to Paul. Paul's up in this philosopher's space. He's ready to, he doesn't pull the four spiritual laws out. What he does is he gives them the gospel using an idol. He says, let me tell you about, see this, this idol that I saw that you, about the unknown God? And then all of a sudden he gives them the gospel through an idol. Imagine if he did that in church this, this Sunday. Pastor Shane comes, he puts a big idol, some big <laughs> rabbit or something, you know, on the platform. Says, let me preach Jesus through the idol. Like you just people go stone him, you know. And it's probably not appropriate in church. But in the marketplace, listen, the rules of engagement in the marketplace are different. The woman at the well is a template for the marketplace. The first thing Jesus says to her is not, I'm the Messiah, come and follow me. He says, Can I have a drink of water? He lets her deepen the conversation. He speaks to her at whatever level. By asking for a cup of water, he's being kind to her, like he's being respectful and kind. When she starts to talk about current affairs, he, he doesn't, he, he's not rude. He engages her, he gives her respect. Remember, at this point, he's a Jew. He has every right culturally to ignore her, to spit on her, to, 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 to treat her roughly, does none of that. He follows the rules of engagement in the marketplace, which is, the, the rules of the engagement in the marketplace is that you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and you allow the Babylonians to invite you deeper with Jesus. Like you, mm. you, you. So what happens is this. Every time I prophesied in the marketplace, I didn't automatically see someone come to Christ. But that wasn't the point. The point was just to reveal God to them. I'm not in charge if they come to Christ. Maybe they need to hear the gospel six more times. Maybe... Maybe they intersect with me. Oh, come on, I've got some clients in Melbourne. Maybe they intersect with me and all of a sudden they drive past Enjoy tomorrow. And they go, man, you know, something about, you know. And all of a sudden, I'm just not in charge of that. I'm in charge to say whatever it is that God wants me to say in that moment. Rules of engagement are different in the marketplace. So what happens is this. My job is to say whatever the Father says, right? The problem is that we make Jesus sound like a Pentecostal or a Baptist or whatever. 
we, we make him sound that because we think it's the Christianese. A lot of the time, people aren't rejecting Jesus, friends. They're, they're rejecting our religious cup. Mm. They're just rejecting our religious cup. I tell you, I, I, I see uh, prophetically, I, I see the gay, like the homosexual community coming to Christ. I see many coming to Christ, but we just don't know how to speak to them mm. well. I, I see lots of atheists coming to Christ. We just don't know how to speak to them well. I see lots of God haters coming to Christ. We just don't know how to speak to them yet. We, but we're learning. It's part of the marketplace assignment. The marketplace ministry, this explosion, this revival that's going to come out, I tell you, we're going to change. We're going to retrain. We're going to, we're going to have books about how to do evangelism. Look, I love street evangelism. Listen, don't get me wrong. I love street evangelism. There are four levels of evangelism, right? Crusade evangelism, we know that. Street evangelism, we, we, we know that. Then there's friendship evangelism. That's really important. It's probably the most effective form of evangelism. But the third, the third, or the third one of the four, it's called marketplace evangelism. And this is snakes and doves. This is where you learn how to be sheep in the midst of wolves. This is this is where you learn how to prophesy without the religious baggage. This is where you learn how to operate in the power of the spirit without religious baggage. This is this is next. That this is this is gonna. It, it was in the church. Some people get it. But I think it's, there's going to be a wave, a, a real renaissance here of this. It's going to be powerful. It is powerful. It is. It's, it's already outworking itself. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, David. One thing that I've I've um, I've asked the Lord for many years in how to be used in business, and yeah. there are people that I'm going to be able to reach that no one else will be, and there'll be people right. that you will be able to reach, and I won't be able to. And so I, I've been in many situations where, you know, with 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 people, with businesses, business owners, and we've got clients that are business owners for sure, who have got issues. And the only thing I have is to pray with them. And, right. you know, we've been in the boardroom with them and I've just said, you know what, when I get into tough circumstances like this, all I know how to do is pray. Can I do that with you? And then, yeah. I, and then I cry with them as we're praying, as they're, as they're crying. And it's just, you know, yeah. so powerful. Like I get so blessed, but they are impacted, yeah. not yeah. with religion, not with yeah. religion, but with the real power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's that's pretty yeah. special. Can I give you a, a piece of language that I found helpful uh, in the marketplace um, when I, you know, maybe want to ask someone, can I pray for you? I always say this. I always say, hey, would you mind if I speak a blessing over you? I've awesome. never had anybody say no. Never have anybody say no. And here's the thing. I don't hold their hand, speak in tongues for three minutes and start waving around. I, I, I don't. What I do is I open my eyes and I lower my voice and I say, Father, I just bless this son, this daughter. I just thank you. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm always looking for a moment to prophesy, right? So I'm like, God, I see they've got a soft heart, you know, or, or God, I, I can see there's some things haven't worked out the way they thought and there's confusion. But I just speak your blessing. I really do. I bless their home. I bless, you know, wow. in that tone. No one has ever said no, never. Talk about never impact. No. Talk yeah, about it's, impact. It's, you know what? I, what I love about you, David, is you. When you're speaking to us, you know you're you're leaning in. You're like you're leaning really yeah. close. And I just I just feel as though that all of us have been leaning into you and just mm. you know when you gather almost like around a campfire and you're leaning into the campfire and you, yeah, you're yeah. talking amongst each other, you know, and you just you know we've been listening this evening and it's just been so powerful. So powerful, and I think that uh, you know I've gotten so much out of it, um, and I know that everyone else has as well because I can see all sorts of comments there um, in the chat. So, um, matey, we've got a few we've got a few minutes left, and I just wouldn't mind if I haven't don't see any major sort of questions in there, but I wouldn't mind just in the few minutes that are left. Do you want to just um, yeah, just 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 pray over this group, just pray yeah. over this group that are on this evening, and prophesy into yeah. this yeah. group because. You know, as you said before, we're here on, yes, we're in lockdown, but we're here on a Thursday night. We've allocated the time. You've allocated your time, and we just want to hear on the Lord. We just yeah. want to know what he's got. We want, to, we want to know what he has for us in business and the impact that we can have for the kingdom, and we want to know how to be able to be most effective in it. So I'm just wondering, could you just pray for us and into us this evening? Love to. I, you know, as, as I've just been sort of sitting in this space, I... I see like two things in my spirit. Like I see, um, I see like a, a question over, like over the front of people's heads, which is, and it's the word breakthrough, and it's like God, like what is it? I, I need a breakthrough. That like it, the season has been this, and and I've endured it, and I know your promises, you know, are there, 
but I really need a breakthrough. And and the second thing I see is I see dollars, uh, and, and I feel like it's financial. Like that, you know, uh, doesn't take much of a profit, right, to talk about breakthrough in finances with a group of business people on. So you know that wasn't a you know that wasn't a pinpoint <laughs> prophecy. Uh, if I tell you your pin number, maybe it's a pinpoint prophecy. But but he, here's the thing that I do believe. I, I believe that people are anointed in spheres, and um, doesn't make them better or worse. It's about their assignment. And, and here's the thing I want to say to you, um, not because I'm I'm a I'm a house kid. I'm a house kid from Southwest Sydney that Jesus saved, right? But there's just something on my life. There's an anointing to release breakthrough for money, and um, I just I've seen it too many times to to be bashful about it because I'm just bragging on Jesus anyway, you know, about yeah. it. I um I. I'll tell you a quick story and, and hopefully it'll be like a prophetic story for some of you. I've got this client who um, calls me up one day, never, and never like knew me, but wasn't a client at that time, calls me up and he says, would you come to my office? So I go to his office. He says to me, um, Dave, I, I, I don't know what's going on. There's a, there's a deal on my desk. It's a significant deal. And he says, it's been jammed up for six months. This guy's very successful. He says, it's been jammed up for six months. And um, he says, I don't know what to do. He says, I thought maybe I'm in sin, right? So he says, I've repented about everything twice. He goes, I'm good. I'm not in sin. Then he said, I fasted a bit and nothing doing, didn't get a breakthrough. He goes, strange things are happening, like lawyers are losing paperwork and accountants are making mistakes. He goes, doesn't make sense, right? The deal's worth 10 million, right? 10 million. And he says, he goes, Lately, I mean, I'm worrying that maybe the devil's trying to broke, make me broke. Maybe the devil's trying to pull me under, you know. He goes, so I'm calling you because you're a pastor and you're a you know, prophetic consultant. He goes, do you think the devil's got me? While he's talking to me in his office, I have this vision. As he's talking, I have this vision. And I see Elijah, the prophet, uh, being fed by ravens and being sustained by the brook, right? You know the story. Everyone knows the Bible, know the story. And then I see the raven stop as this guy's talking. I see the raven stop and the brook dry up. And as this guy's talking, I hear the voice of the Lord say to me, when this bloke finishes talking, I want you to tell him that the devil's not resisting him. I am. Right? And I'm like, God, you're going to give me something else. That's not, yeah, that's not, it's not all that encouraging. You know, this guy's going to kick me out of his office. He goes, no, no, tell him that I'm, I'm resisting him. And the reason I'm resisting him is because he stopped listening to me. And he says, this bloke's operating in tens of millions of dollars and I've got a destiny for him to operate in hundreds of millions. But he's, he's you know, he's, he's thinking, this is, this is, this is, this is all right. I can do this. God says, I, I got hundreds of millions with this guy and he's operating in tens of millions and he's happy. So when he stops talking, I, I say it to him. I tell him, I tell him the vision. I say, listen, it's this, this and that. Straight away, he says, you know what? That's the word of the Lord. I've got to tell you, I, I've gotten anxious. I stopped listening to God trying to push this thing through, trying to get the breakthrough, starts repenting. God, I'm sorry. Sorry, stop listening to you. Father, I just, this thing's jammed for six months, right? Do you know, five days later, it's a Friday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, five days later, text me, says, bloke just walked in the office, bought the deal, everything's done. It's done. Two million dollars deposit. Bang. Done. Cleared. He says to me, "You need to come back to my office every month. You need to be my my business coach." Six months later, in the middle of the first lockdown in COVID, he texts me. He says, "Just want to tell you." So remember, I prophesied in December. This is June 2020 now. He says to me, "Just want to tell you, just signed the first hundred million dollar deal." Like, we 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 think breakthroughs this massive wrestle. What if it's just, God, I need you. God, I, I, I stopped listening. God, I got anxious, started striving. Holy Spirit, you're the ultimate businessman. What do you need? What do you need me to do? What, 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 what place of surrender are you inviting me to? Wow. So I, I'd like to pray that prayer. You know, yeah. um, Father, I just thank you. I thank you. I know I can just, I can see the faces. I can see the people here. I can see them. I God, I thank you. You know, each and every one, you, you, you intimately, God, you, you, <laughs> these are your businesses and these are your stewards. These are your ambassadors. 
Father, I thank you that each of them, Lord, on this assignment, Holy Spirit, we need you. We, we, we're, we're not going to get spooked by germs on the end of a fing- our fingers, Lord. COVID is just is not greater than you, Holy Spirit. We declare right now that, Father, we are son, sons and daughters, God. We are priests and kings in the earth, in ministry. Father, I thank you. You know, every contract that is delayed, you know, every, every, uh, every invoice that is outstanding, God, you know, every debtor that is calling, you, you, you see it, God. We thank you right now. We, I just declare, we declare, Lord, your grace. You, you said, Lord, in Acts 2, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And on my main, uh, men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I thank you for prophetic dreams. I thank you for prophetic thoughts. I thank you, Lord God, that even as some of them are, Lord, just in the midst of their, their office or, or the shop or wherever they are, that Holy Spirit, your voice, your, your wisdom is going to come. You're going to, you're going to architect events. You're going to create, Lord, synergistic moments, divine appointments. We release the angelic realm. We just, uh, Lord, you said in Hebrews that the angels were, were given to the heirs of salvation and their ministering spirits. We just release God, all that you're doing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare that, God, you're going to create, Lord, make us lights in the midst of darkness while everybody else is talking panic and recession and inflation and lockdown. God, I thank you for supernatural uh, provision, supernatural business being released over every heart and every life. Father, I thank you right now. I lift off tiredness. I lift off lethargy. I lift off religious thinking in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I lift off even small thinking in Jesus' name. I lift off striving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And and I just declare that the power of the Spirit, the grace of God, divine enabling is their portion and their cup in Jesus' name. I declare testimony after testimony after testimony. We declare right now, even in 2022, record years in Jesus' name. I declare breakthrough, breakthrough year in 2022. I thank you in Jesus' name. You're going to give, Lord, some of them, it's going to be literally a download of the spirit of wisdom. It's going to get wisdom to know what to do. Some of you, you're, you're dealing with staff um, that are just, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's drama there. I just break off all confusion. I break off all dissension in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare wisdom to come upon you, uh, to know how to deal with your staff in a godly way, how to, how to raise them up, how to heal them, restore them, whatever it is that needs to happen in Jesus name. I, I, I hear like partnerships. There's, there's some partnerships that are, they're good. They're not great. Uh, I even sense some of these partnerships are not just business partnerships, but it's the home, you know, it's, it's, it's the partners, husbands and wives. I just declare unity right now, unity in Jesus' name. Uh, I declare that in the home. I thank you that, Father, that, that, that our prayers won't be annulled, that, that there won't be dissension, God, in that, but there'll be literally just a oneness, God, um, amongst, Lord, in, in unity between husband and wife knowing one another, respecting one another, understanding the ministry of Christ that each one brings to the equation. Father, we thank you right now. I declare, let your kingdom be advanced. God, as a result of these men and women rising in business, I declare, let enjoy church, God. Let let, let, let this powerhouse representation of your kingdom be advanced on every side and every other congregation and church that is represented here online. We declare right now from the left to the right to the Lord, not just, I mean, I'm talking about literally, Lord, not just money at the feet, but absolutely finances, but I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about prayer push behind. I'm talking about that our businesses will become literally evangelistic centers, that the front door of our churches won't be the front door of the building necessarily, but it'll be the front door of our business houses. God, that will be the church in the city uh, for your glory, Lord. And and, and Lord, uh, understand how to do community together, how to, Lord, hand in glove, each one knowing their territory. Father, I thank you for that. I thank you that these are ministers in the marketplace. And I just release marketplace miracles over you tonight 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.